Hey, I'm Immy, and over the past few years, I've suddenly changed a lot. I packed up my life in London and moved to Denver in search of new experiences to finally live with my best friend and be as close to the mountains as possible. A couple of years ago, I left my 20s behind me and moved into a new chapter of my life. As we step into this decade, it's more than just a number change. It's a transformative period, at least it is for me, exploring themes of growth, knowledge, and the future direction I aspire to take. In this series, we'll tackle big topics, those essential discussions that sometimes we shy away from. We'll discover new things about ourselves and I'll be sharing more openly than I ever have, inviting you to do the same if you want to. Together, we'll focus on building our independence and self-reliance, learning new skills, building community, and pushing our boundaries and comfort zones. So join me as we embark on this journey of rediscovery, where every step forward is a step towards becoming a more authentic and true version of ourselves. Let's learn, grow, and hopefully thrive together. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you never miss an episode of our adventures into the heart of what really matters as we journey through this series, Rediscovering Myself in My 30s. Let's get started. Hello. I have decided each month I'm going to do a monthly vlog where we talk about things that are to do with growing up in our 30s, what we're doing in life generally, and just try to add a little bit more casuality, casualness to this channel. And I wanted to do this because I think a lot of my videos, I keep them very well structured because I think that's what people want to see and I want to make sure that they're well done, all that kind of stuff. But then it leaves very little room for chat for chit chat to kind of explore ideas, explore things that we're thinking about. And yeah, I just thought that that's what I would do. Once a month, do a longer monthly vlog, discussing all the things that I'm up to at the moment and also other things that are just on my mind, you know? So I had my wisdom teeth out a couple of days ago, the top ones. I've had many problems with my wisdom teeth before, the bottom ones, and I had them out. But in the UK, you only get them out if you have a problem. So I didn't get the top ones out. Several years later, we now have a problem. So we got them out. Not feeling the best today, to be honest. Some of you might be like, well, obviously you just had your teeth out. But in the US, I feel like they give you a lot more drugs, you know? I feel like the sedation was a lot heavier. They even gave me steroids for the swelling, which have not helped. And yeah, I just feel a lot like more like I've been through something than when I was in the UK and I had my teeth out. So feeling all sorts of ways. Today, I finished my meal prep video, which I got up, which I'm very pleased about. I'm also trying to finish this blanket that I've been making. It's my first ever crochet project, so don't judge me too much. I know that it's messy, but I'm still, I'm still proud. But this was like the small section that I did to try and get it, kind of understand what it was gonna look like. And here are all my other squares. I ended up making 120 squares. And I've just been knitting them in rows of 10 and then I'll knit the rows all together and it's going to be a 10 by 12 square one. It's been challenging, I won't lie, but <laughs> I'm going to finish doing this today and then hopefully when I'm feeling better we can chit chat a bit, a bit more about what's, what's going on, what's, you know, life. I feel like I've really got into making things this year and it has made me think a lot of more about school and how my school never really gave space for people who weren't particularly interested in very academic careers. You know, people who are more interested in tactile, practical, physical careers and, and jobs like that. And I really feel like that put me off trying to get into making things. And so I'm really having a renaissance <laughs> now that I'm in my 30s to really try and learn as many skills as I possibly can to figure out the things that I enjoy the most. I also got this really fun box for Christmas from my sisters-in-law and it's like a yarn box so you put it in and it's so helpful when you're just like pulling and the yarn ball doesn't just like fall away. Anyway I'm gonna keep putting this together and we can talk a little bit more maybe about crafting. I feel like people are really getting into crafting now that they're in their 30s. Well obviously obviously a lot of people I follow are very young who are doing this and I think that that's amazing and I find them very inspirational and I really admire their creativity and their skill. What I mean more so is millennials kind of taking back their choice to like, I don't know, I don't know, maybe I'm just unsure about where I'm going with this. I personally didn't feel like when I was out of school and out of university that learning new things like this was an option or just wasn't part of my consciousness, but now I'm obsessed and I really wanna see what this looks like because I'm really worried that it's gonna look terrible because I know I chose the wrong color for the yellow, I know I chose a color that's you can't see it as well and it's very it's a very cold palette i wanted a much warmer yellow in there but never mind anyway i'm not feeling great to be honest so i'm just gonna crack on with this 
breakfast and then maybe watch a film. Maybe eat some ice cream later. My mouth feels very strange. Okay, so I finally finished my blanket. I've done all the squares and I've attached them all together. I'm just doing a border. I first did a border with blue and now I'm doing border with white and then, and then I'm thinking because I've already learned how to do a single crochet border, which is what I thought I was just gonna do to make it simple. But I think actually after I've done a single crochet border in white, I'm then gonna do a shell border. I did the two borders, just a single crochet, one in blue and then one in white, because I wanted to make it feel more complete, more uniform. But I think the shell might be quite fun and I can learn one more skill from this first crochet project. And then after that, I'll weave in all the ends. And then I think we'll block it to really go through that whole seeing things through process, finishing things off really nicely and neatly. I have used a different crochet hook size for the border. I used a smaller one. Obviously I usually wouldn't do that because it obviously brings it slightly in, but I just can't use an eight millimeter hook anymore. I just can't. So I went down to a six and a half, which feels a lot more manageable. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this and then, <sighs> I'm just really proud of myself. I think mostly for seeing this through because it was a very difficult project for me mentally because it took so long, but I've really enjoyed the process. And yeah, I just can't wait to see it when it's like properly finished and everything is really nice and neatly tucked away and done. Yeah, this is a good month for projecting, I think. Pretty exciting. I can't remember if I showed you what my blanket actually looked like when I finished it. So unless you've seen my shorts, you'll see what it looked like, but I just wanted to show you because I'm so proud that I finally finished this blanket. Although I do have a few ends to weave in, but. <laughs> this is what it looks like. I actually put it around myself and I thought this would look very good as a jacket. And I did find a kind of crochet jacket from Anthropology that's like $300. And I thought that doesn't look that difficult to make. <laughs> so that's where my head is at. But I did with, cause I had some of this yarn left over. I did also make this. I made a tester water, bo water bottle cover. It's a little short, but I learned some new techniques. I learned the magic loop, which was life-changing. And I also learned the Turkish cast-on method. So it's seamless at the bottom. So there's no seam. Isn't that so clever? I actually feel like it's changed my life. The Turkish cast-on with the magic loop. Game changer. Anyway, this was a test to see if I liked this pattern, see if it fit nicely on the corners or the shoulders rather, and here. Obviously it's a little short, so I'll make a note and I messed up some of the stitches by accident. So for my next one, because we have two, this is for him. He can have the, the average one. At my local yarn shop, they have a like discount bargain corner where they're getting rid of stuff. So I was able to get some really nice yarn for really cheap, which is really nice. So I could have two. So this is a scrap one and the other one's gonna be a kind of one where I try to mix up the pattern a little bit. So it won't be just, I mean, this looks a bit like a flag. I wanted to use all the colors. Anyway, the other one's gonna be sort of a, I, I got a, one of those variegated yarns. I don't know if that's what it's called, you know, where it has like specks of other color in it. So I'm looking forward to trying that. So we'll try that today, but I'm just about to head to the gym. I just remembered that I hadn't showed you that, my blanket, and I wanted to show you this as well, because I'm really proud of this, and I'm really proud of this. I'm really trying to up my skills and learn new things within knitting, rather than just like moving on to something else. But yeah, just thought I would share that. So today I'm finishing off a project that I started when I was not feeling particularly well. I had some leftover yarn, so I wanted to use it up because you know we hate waste. Even if I'm gonna start new hobbies, I still wanna try and find a way to do it as sustainably as possible because why would I not, why would I not do that? Anyway, so I started making these sort of sunburst squares and I've ended up making almost 60 of them. I have tried to figured this out without necessarily looking at a pattern. I had a pattern for these squares, but I calculated how many I thought I would need and then just kind of went ahead with it. So we're gonna see today if we're actually gonna be able 
if we have enough. And if not, then I will have to figure something out. But I'm just going to finish this last square that I was in the middle of finishing. And then I'm gonna lay out all of the squares and we'll see where we're at. I'm basically doing 24 on the front, 24 on the back. And then I'm not sure whether I'm gonna need three squares, sorry, three sides, three squares each row for the arms or whether I can just use two squares each row for the arms. So I'll have to figure that out because these are pretty these are pretty big squares. They're not like particularly small. Honestly, the sunburst square is so much easier than the previous blanket that I was making. It's so much easier because it literally is just double crochet, a puff ball or a puff stitch and then four half double crochets and that's it and it's a really good way to learn kind of slip stitch single double and a triple crochet what i'm doing right now is a triple crochet for the corners so yeah i think it's a really easy easy pattern for a beginner for sure i'll leave the link down below for the tutorial that i used for making these sunburst squares because this is the second thing i've ever crocheted <laughs> i'm definitely not an expert or someone who's coming up with patterns at all so i'm pretty excited to see how this goes. I had to get a bit uh, clever, I guess. I didn't want to have to buy a yarn round thing. I don't know what you would call them, where you turn the skein, skein into a cake. So I just use my chair. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this and then we'll spread out all the squares and we'll see where we're at. And then I'm gonna have to look up some kind of way to see how to attach them all together in a cardigan shape that makes it fit me well. Lots of confusing <laughs> things. <laughs> But I've really enjoyed this project. This has been a really fun one because I just started it just to see how it went and then it turned into a pretty big project and I think it's gonna be, yeah. I'm really excited to see how this turns out, to be honest. Good morning. I made some really good progress yesterday. I finished one piece, which is the front and the back panel. So we have this, which is gonna be on one side and then I've mostly finished the other one. So then I have to do the middle panel at the back that will connect this piece and the next piece together. And then I need to do the arms, the hem at the bottom, and then I'll have to figure out if I have enough. I think I might have almost have enough squares. I'm still deciding on the cuffs, whether to do a tight cuff or a kind of loose cuff. And then also what to do in the middle, maybe another ridge hem. I don't know what you call it, it's stretchy hem, but I'm just gonna head to the gym now and then I'm gonna come back and that's gonna be my project for the day, try and get that finished. I really thought it was gonna take me a lot less time because I was using a faster stitch, like I was I think it was called whip stitch, but alas, it did not take me less time. It literally took me probably maybe four or five hours just to stitch the two front and back panels together, but I'm enjoying the process and that is the main thing. One of the things I really like about getting stuck into a project like this is that I just don't go on my phone because my fingers are, my hands are occupied, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, and then I spend less time on social media, which is really nice. Because then in the evening when I want to watch a specific YouTube video or something, then it's it's there. Having said that, because I am spending so long knitting things together, crocheting and whatever, I do watch a lot of Grey's Anatomy, which I'm currently watching. So, also it's amazing. All the birds have finally started coming back and it definitely makes me feel like spring is here. Okay, we're finally getting into the last stages of making this cardigan. I've just sewn up one side and I, you can actually see a bit better of what it's gonna look like, which is really exciting because I was worried for a long time because when it looks like this, it's just kind of hard to know what it's actually gonna look like and whether all that effort you put in is worth it. And then I was worried that it was too big and I put too many squares in the back and then I didn't initially have the gusset, but that has made a humongous difference. And I'm really glad that I did that because now it looks and feels good. I had to add two, I was two squares short. and I didn't want to buy a whole new skein or skein of this because I was just gonna 
I wouldn't have a use for the rest of it and we hate waste. So I used some yarn that I already had that I was having for a different project. And I feel like it goes pretty well. It's just gonna be on the bottom here and on the other side as well. So it kind of matches. And I just think it goes surprisingly well. I tried to pick one that had some kind of the other colors, but I'm very excited. I'm gonna finish sewing up the other side. And then all I have left to do is the ribbing. And I think the ribbing will make it look a lot better because obviously it's quite wide right now, but the ribbing is gonna be like at least this so it will come in and then the ribbing on the bottom will be quite thick as well so I think it will all look good. I've decided because the sleeves are actually quite long I'm not gonna do a cuff I'm just going to add a bit extra and let it be kind of a wide one because this feels really nice. I cannot believe that I have made something that is wearable. It honestly feels like magic to me. My mind is blown. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like first when we finish it but still. Okay, so I finally finished my cardigan. I did the trim and I blocked it and I'll show you what it looks like in a sec. But because that is now done, I think it really is time to move on to the next project where I actually learned to use my sewing machine because there are a couple of little things that I want to make, but the goal is to be able to make my own clothes and I'm only gonna be able to do that if I finally start. But let me show you uh, what the cardigan looks like just because it's finished now. So inevitably there were a few mishaps. I definitely made the sleeves a little bit too long and all of these things become very apparent once you block your items or your clothes. But this is what it looks like. And to be honest, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a nice like oversized. It's basically like wearing a blanket. As you can see, it's very oversized. Got the nice little yellow details here and the arms are a bit long, but <sighs> considering it is snowing outside and we already have about 10 inches of snow, I feel like where having a wearable blanket is like optimal. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna move on to learning to sew, but I think this is probably gonna be in the next video that I make because this video was supposed to go up like two weeks ago, but this jumper with this cardigan took me so long. So let's make a cup of tea and we'll sit down and we'll have a little discussion about what this series is gonna entail and what I mean when I say I'm rediscovering myself in my 30s, because it's a whole thing. It's a whole journey that we're embarking on, but I'm pretty excited. I'm also just making another salad and of course it's tofu sweet potato, other vegetables and stuff and a nice tahini sauce. I'm really obsessed with that this month. Okay, so kind of what I mean when I say I am rediscovering myself in my 30s is because the last of my 20s, early 30s really were kind of encapsulated by the pandemic. So that was kind of a couple of years of my life where I don't really feel like I was doing anything obviously no one was and yeah I think maybe I lost myself a little bit during those couple of years and now I've moved to the US I live in Colorado with my husband we got married we have our own like first place together and I definitely lost a lot of my independence when I moved here because I was scared of a lot of things like driving on the other side of the road and the other side of the car also driving in Denver I'm used to driving in London like I'm used to driving in big cities with tiny roads and buses and motorbikes and cyclists and pedestrians and all of these different Different things but Denver is a whole different ball game <laughs> honestly <laughs> people drive in a way that I am not used to let's put it that way people are very aggressive drivers and that was something I had to get used to a lot also hiking when I hiked in the UK the scariest thing I had to deal with were cows don't get me wrong pe cows do kill people like cows are scary but here I have to think about mountain lions and I have to think about very changeable weather in the mountains. I have to think about altitude. I have to think about bears and other things like that. I've just got to think about more things. Most notably, I am worried about the weather. I have done a lot of research and I've had a lot of experience now over the past year and a half of living here. So I think I would feel more comfortable hiking alone now. Sorry, my fridge is very loud, but 
the whole point is I want to gain back my independence. I want to explore new hobbies and things that I had never explored before. And I just want to get to know myself again and decide what it is that I really want in life. Do I want to live here for longer? Do we want to have a family? Do we want to do all of these different things? Do we want to get a dog? Do we want to buy a house? Can we even afford to buy a house? All of these questions are things I want to be exploring this year. So if this sounds interesting to you, then please subscribe and let me know in the comments your experience of turning 30. Have you lost or gained any independence? And how have you gone about doing that? I'd be really, really interested. So thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it to the end. Leave a little emoji <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> let me see what you see what you come up with. But thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Okay. Bye.